Okay, everybody. So the last time we were on the video, I was getting ready to hook up the return lines, put the pumps and the heaters in. Uh, we ended up being a little short on one of the return lines. This piece right here. It's supposed to go all the way to the back, and it, it doesn't go all the way to the back. So the company is sending me another length of that, and it'll hook up into this this other pump here. But I've got one in place already, and we've got that in there. And then I put one of the heaters in the middle chamber. This is also where the protein skimmer will sit, so I'm just going to have to see if that will fit. If not, we'll figure something else out. And the reason that I'm doing that is these heaters are so long. You see that one right there in the first chamber is having to go caddy corner just to fit into the chamber. So I couldn't really put the two in there because they were butting against each other. So we're going to see how it fits with the protein skimmer and go from there. I really put the two in there because they were butting against each other so we're going to see how it fits with the protein skimmer and go from there i do have the skimmer um i pulled it off of a different tank that i that i had before we're going to go with the tunes dc skimmer it's rated for a much larger tank so we're going to try that out first and see how it goes so the next part is getting a power strip installed and getting all of our wires bundled together unfortunately right now i can't leave to do that because i'm at the store so what i'm going to start doing is we're going to go ahead and put our sand in here uh, a lot of people say to put the rock in first and the reason for that is so that when the sand gets shifted the rocks won't shift and fall but I find it a little bit easier to put a thin layer of sand down first because number one I don't want to scratch the glass too much and two it's hard to get the rocks in my experience to stay in place on that slick surface so we're gonna go ahead and put some of the sand in here we're gonna go ahead and mix up some water again I told you I'm gonna show you guys how to do that too because we're, we're setting this up like we're going to show you how to set up a tank from start to stop, whether you have experienced setting up a saltwater tank or not. You're going to know everything there is to know about setting up a tank once we're through with this. And it doesn't matter how big the tank is or how small the tank is, the principles are the same. Anyway, so what we're going to use for sand is this uh, aragonite from Carib Sea. It is not labeled live sand i mean it's not wet with bacteria on it already but that doesn't matter we're going to use so much of it that it's kind of pointless to spend all that money on on live sand there's going to be plenty of live bacteria in this tank and that sand will get seeded with bacteria very shortly anyway so uh, it's it's really not necessary but if you were setting up a tank let's say you were setting up something like this and you wanted to go with some live sand to help boost your bacteria to go ahead and be able to put fish into your tank sooner in other words to get your cycle completed sooner so you could add fish to it you could add live sand and what we mean by live sand and it doesn't mean the sand is alive it just means that it has good bacteria in it nitrifying bacteria See, what happens is that you have to get your tank cycled. And the way the cycle works is you have to introduce waste in some way, shape, or form. And that will either be or will turn into ammonia in the system, which will get broke down by the nitrifying bacteria, first into nitrites and then into nitrates which is less harmful to fish and the way that the cycle gets started is if you have live sand in your tank theoretically you already have some of the good bacteria and that's what we mean when we say cycle a tank we need to establish a good bacteria colony 
you can start with live sand that's one way to do it you could also add bacteria in a bottle that's a new option that hasn't been around for very long and it has become more trustworthy in the past few years so what we normally do is a combination of the two and then add live rock and live rock again it doesn't mean that the rock itself is alive that's not really even possible what it means is that the live rock contains live nitrifying bacteria that's what live rock is you can culture it from dried out rock just by adding it to your tank and letting it be in there for a while and that bacteria colony will populate onto the rock so between live sand live rock and bacteria in a bottle you can pretty well assume that you're going to have a good bacteria population right away now what you need to understand is the bacteria needs surface so the sand is a surface and the amount of rock is a surface so what we recommend is about a pound per gallon for each one about a pound per gallon of sand and about a pound per gallon of rock this is a 180 gallon setup basically so we want to use at least that much poundage in each sand and rock now that can vary a little bit because if you use dry rock you're going to have more surface area per pound than you would if you used rock that was already wet now let me explain that to you a little further this here is dry base rock it's dry it's not in water it doesn't have bacteria colony on it you see how white it is it comes in a box like that and you need to rinse that very well and let it cure in a salt water container for about four to six weeks before you put it into your tank and that lets all the phosphates and everything out of the rock so that it doesn't leach into your system and cause problems such as nuisance algae now let me show you an example of what I mean by culturing the rock if you'll notice in this tank there's a, a brownish purple rock and then there's white pieces just like I showed you on either side of it now the brownish purple rock is live cultured rock that comes out of the ocean it has good bacteria in it already and coralline algae coralline algae is the red sort of maroonish color you see it right there on the tips of the rocks that is an algae it's hard and it and it encrusts the rock and covers it eventually you can look at this piece here you see there's a little bit of it on the sorry let me get it zoomed in see a little bit on the bottom but not so much on top it's starting to cover all over this rock was white just like the other rocks about six months ago and since it has been in our system it has picked up good bacteria and different forms of algae that are in different colors now if I were to flip that rock over there would more than likely be a white spot like this one see this rock was the same thing on the bottom it's got the dark colors and on the top since we flipped it over the other day it's white and you can see it's starting to pick up some of that red color as well it typically takes about six months for a rock to go from this to something a little bit more like this and you can do it in your tank and it's a little bit cheaper to, to do it that way versus buying it all already wet and live alright we're getting ready to put the rocks in the tank and do the land of uh, aquascaping what we're using for rocks is the Carib Sea Life Rock it comes in different shapes and sizes 
and it's coated with a material that looks like coralline algae so that it looks like it's been established for a long time even though it's dry base rock and some of the benefits to using this besides just the look is that it doesn't come with the unwanted pests that you sometimes get hitchhiking in your live rock so what we're going to do is we're going to create a base in the back here we're going to allow some holes for the fish to swim through so they have a way to get all the way around the tank. So we're going to go ahead and put some of these rocks in here. These are just the base rocks and we it comes in a different uh, shapes and sizes and we'll show you some of the other shapes here in just a moment but these are just the regular rock base rocks. All right, everybody, we have the sand and the rocks in the tank. And this is what we've come up with for our aquascaping so far. It may change, but so far, this is what we have. We built a couple of cool little caves. Left some swimming room in there for the fish. And left a gap so they can get around the backside too. So that they can make full laps. All righty. And what we used is the Carib Sea Life Rock. We used uh, some of the base rocks that they have, and we used some of the shape material. See how that one looks like an arch? And then that one right there. And all this rock, it looks like it's live rock already. Uh, it looks as it's uh, encased in coralline algae, but it's actually just painted on. But it looks really really great you can see all the details in it so we ended up going with the aragonite sand it's a little chunkier sand than the uh, than the fine stuff but we're gonna have so many or so much flow in this tank that we wanted to make sure the sand didn't get blown around everywhere so we went with the chunkier stuff but it's still fine that anything like a wrasse or something can still bury itself in it it's not so coarse that they couldn't do that and it's actually kind of lightweight really okay so we're about to get ready to put the first water in the tank in the tank part anyway we already have water in the sump I should probably go back and show you that so we're still waiting on a, a, another part of the hose here this hose was a little too short but that's okay and these are just our cords for our uh, heater and our return pumps I've still got to get up under here and get a power strip hooked up but for the time being we went ahead and filtered enough water and got it put into the tank to where the entire sump is filled up so we don't have to worry about that and now we're going to put the first water into our tank so epic moment so we're going to I'm going to set the camera over here and pour the first bucket in there just to commemorate the build Maybe one second I've got to find a good spot to put the camera Here we go. I started to go with a, uh, a pump and pump the water into the tank, and I probably will the further I go along, but I didn't have the necessary things here with me today to do that, and I'm anxious to get the water in the tank, and we've got to filter enough water to get it filled up. So I need my buckets empty. So long story short, I'm going to dip this in here with a pitcher. Here we go, first water. Ah, it's wet. Water. We've got water in the tank. Yeah, this is going to take a little while.
So definitely on the next trash can of water that I bring out, we're definitely going to have to bring a pump and some hose to connect it next time so that this doesn't have to be done by hand for all 170 gallons or so. I'm going to wet this rock right here and then I'm going to give you guys a little bit better close up of the rock because I'm really impressed with this rock. It looks amazing. I want to show you what it actually looks like under the water so we get it wet right quick and then I'll zoom in. We have waited a long time on this tank to get here. I'm glad it's finally here and I'm super excited about finally putting water in the tank. Everybody keeps asking, when are we going to get it set up? When are we going to set up? I'm, it may not look like it, but we're working on this tank. Every day we've done something to it to try to get it ready. and It's just been a process. <laughs> Alright, that's enough water on the, on the rocks for right now. I just wanted to kind of show you what it looks like. Getting water everywhere. Alright, so I'm going to show you. See how cool that rock looks? Sorry about the shaky camera, by the way. I'm not using a tripod today, so. But yeah, you can tell this rock is just amazing. It looks like it's. Looks like it's been in there for years. But it's actually just dry rock and we just took it out of the box and that's the way it comes. It's got some nice texture to it too. Can you tell the texture? Let's see if we can get it zoomed in here. See the, the rough texture to it? It's really nice. It makes it look just like it's just encased with coralline algae really cool all right guys i'm gonna finish putting this water in i'm sure you don't want to sit there and watch me dump a bucket of water at a time into this tank so i'm gonna do that and the next time that i see you we're gonna be a little further along with the water 